Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to make our part one video for Walt Disney Company. Now, I do apologize. I wanted to have my Walt Disney uh, series out last week, but I had a wedding that I was a part of for the weekend and rehearsal on Friday and had some work stuff kind of uh, build up at the end of the week, so I had to prioritize that. But I think the patience will pay off. I got a lot of good information to go over here. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, but before we get into it, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, so going into the video, I'm going to treat this like it's a stock that I have not looked at before. And I still have the earnings report to go look through after this. And followed with that video will be our stock analyzer. And then we'll wrap it up with the chart aspect of things. So, looking at this, there are some red flags that I would definitely identify in this metrics tab without going into any further analysis for it. Uh, revenue to net income, this does not equal out to a good profit margin. You can see year-to-date profit margin is 3.5%. Big disconnect from their five-year average of 8.6%. Now, looking at the PE, big disconnect from their five-year average PE. Price of sales, a little bit on the higher side for these profit margins. Uh, same scenario, big disconnect and free cash flow from their five-year average. It shows that they're paying a dividend, but they are not paying a dividend unless they announce something in their most recent earnings that they're going to uh, continue that. Um, low return on assets and equity, and off of first glance, it doesn't look like they invest their money very well either. So we're going to dive into these and determine if it is a negative or something to monitor, or maybe it could even be a positive or some there's room to improve right there. So first we're going to click on this eight pillars tab. Now you can see off of first glance, if I was just pulling this company up, knew nothing about them, uh, seven red check marks is not, is not a good look. But let's remember, Disney has a huge moat. They own the Disney, they own uh, Star Wars, they're in the streaming business of, th of things, they own amusement parks, they're uh, connected with the ESPN and several different TV production, production studios. Disney has a large mode. Am I worried about them going out of business? I would, I would be baffled if Disney went out of business. So, going back to this, we're going to determine if these are actually red flags or if we can work with these and find a way to flip these to a positive. Now I did have someone mention to me, hey, I can't use that software that you're using. How do I, how can I look at this financial information and uh, do what you're doing? So for part of this video, we're going to go to return on invested capital.ai and we're going to look through some of these numbers and these metrics. So starting with revenue. From, to, from 2006, we are going to run this through all the ways. I can see consistent growth all the ways through. Now, uh, they kind of fell off a little bit and slowed down, decreased revenue right here. So we are going to monitor that before we do our stock analyzer tool. Now, looking at the net profit from 2006, three, three billion, four and a half, four and a half, three, four, four point eight, five point six. Pretty consistent growth in net profit going around here. And then boom, 2019 to 2020, they went from 11 billion to negative 2.8 billion. Now hold that thought before we talk about that some more. Now you can see they did get back to profitability. Um, looking into the future, is it possible that they get back on this consistent growth? From 2006 to 2018, very consistent growth in net income. So looking back to our everything money, am I as worried about this red check mark right here? I'm not as worried about it because they showed me in the, in the past that they're able to consistently grow their net income. Going back to a turn on invested capital, the next thing we're going to look at is their debt. So long-term debt. Uh, consistently down here at this 10 billion to 12 billion, uh, a little bit of a spike right here in 2016, and they continue. They paid off a little bit. Now 2019, they more than doubled their debt. Now keep keep that in mind because this is a big component of my analysis for their financials. Now 2020, 52. Now another big increase in debt. Now they've slowly started paying this debt off. But let's remember, um, they took on a lot of debt in 2019. And then in 2020, COVID hit, and Disney is in a rare scenario where they were 
uh, negatively affected by COVID, in my opinion, because they have theme parks and they have business that they construct where they needed people to be out in the public to be able to benefit from that. So they took on a lot of debt and then, boom, hit by COVID. Now, a couple interesting things that I want to point out, the dividend. From 2006, consistently increasing their dividend. Now, this was a huge spike in dividend, but if I were to take $0.87 cents to $1.42, still consistently increasing their dividend now 2019 the year that they had that they increased a lot of debt they have a huge drop off in their dividend now they actually cut their dividend so they took on a lot of debt they needed to be able to find ways to pay that debt what is one way to open up capital to be able to pay off debt cutting your dividend so do I look at this as a negative? Some people could have looked at this as a negative. I look at it as a, as a positive because they needed to find a way to pay off their debt without issuing even more debt or diluting a large amount of shares. Now, that leads me to my next point that I want to get across. We're going to look at these shares outstanding. From 2006, we're going to move right along, consistently buying back shares. Now, a couple of issuances here, that's nothing to be worried about because the long-term outlook, they've consistently bought back shares. Now, 2019, the year they took on a lot of debt. That's a decent spike in shares outstanding. Now, 2020 with COVID, they just took out a lot of debt. They cut their dividend down so that they can pay off their debt easier, but this was not enough. You can see that they completely cut this dividend the following year. Now, they had to issue more shares to get capital to be able to pay off that debt. But looking long-term out into the future, from 2022 and beyond are they going to continue issuing shares that I will leave that up for you to decide but from 2006 to 2018 they consistently bought back shares so something to keep in mind there in my analysis going forward do I think that they're going to continue diluting shares like this let's look at the pillar over the last five years they've issued 15 percent of their shares do I think that's going to continue going forward that is up for me to decide, but from 2006 to 2018, consistently bought back shares. I'm not as worried about this share dilution that it's showing right here. So back to return on invested capital. Next thing we're going to look at is the net profit margins. So from 2006 and moving forward, 10, 13, 12, 9, 10, 12, 13, 13 and a half, 15 and a half, 16, 17, 16, 21 in 2018. 16% and boom, 2020, they had negative 4.4% profit margin. Now they've started getting back on track, 3 and 3.7 year to date. But do I think they're going to have these low amount of profit margin going forward? From 2016, consistent profit margin and increases in profit margins. And then the year they took on a lot of debt, they got hit hard by COVID, so they're negatively affected by that. Do I think they're going to hold these profit margins going forward? I don't th I don't think this is going to be the case. I'm not going to be plugging in low single-digit profit margins moving forward in my analysis. Now, back to the, the these pillars. These are all red checks, right? Five-year, 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 five-year. Looking at this, their last three years are definitely skewing their five year numbers. So, I'm not in my analysis, I'm not going to be taking these five year numbers into account as much when they've showed me from 2006 to 2018 that they have done what they needed to do as a company. And I think that they it's potential that they get back on track with that. The question that you have to ask yourself yourself is how long is it going to take them to get back on track? Now, the last thing we're going to go over real quick here is the return on invested capital. You could sit here and say, oh, Disney, they don't invest their capital very well. Year-to-date, 1%, and five-year average, 2.8%. We go back to uh, return on invested capital right here from 2006 moving forward. 7, 10, 9, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 11 and a half, 13, 13.7, 13, 13, 17. Okay, now 2019, huge drop off right here, and now they had negative return on invested capital, 2.1 and 2.6. Moving forward, do I think Apple, or not Apple, do I think Disney is going to put up low single digit return on invested capital? What, it, it's hard for me to think that when they've showed me from 2006 to 2018 that they can deliver a return on invested capital at a consistent rate. So moving forward, I'm not as worried about this red check mark right here. Something to, something to 
to monitor, of course, and this is why in the next video we're going to go into their earnings report before we do the stock analyzer tool. And uh, yeah, this is going to wrap up my uh, analysis on like first glance of their financial statements. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the content and I hope you uh, return back for the second video on the earnings report and we'll see you on the next one.